So first up, dogs. How do you fence a dog or free range a dog? Um, there's several fence options. Um, most of the time if you look in town, you'll see a chain link fence. That tends to be the most popular. If you're out on Anchorage, that's a lot of fence. And honestly, if you're out on the Anchorage, most of the time the dog's fine. Once he discovers or figures out where his home is, they usually don't go very far. Farm dogs. If you do have a dog who runs, <clears throat> you can get either a tether, just a basic tie line, tether them in the yard, or what we actually do, because we have two dogs that are actually fenced of our pack of four, they have an invisible, it's called a pet safe system, um, and they've got an invisible fence. The tower sits in my house, it has to stay protected, but then it connects to their collars and keeps them inside a perimeter. If they leave, most, this is what I like about this collar, so most collars um, will shock them once and then they're gone. This collar continues to shock them, which sounds harsh, I know. But when you're dealing with stubborn cattle dogs, who are used to getting kicked in the head by a cow, one shock ain't gonna do it. They will just keep going. It beeps them first for a warning. So, um, it will actually continue to shock them for, I think it's two minutes max, and then it cuts out until they get their butt backs in the sense. So, it beeps, and as soon as they, as they get close to the border, and once they cross, it shocks them until they come back. They will have to get shocked once before they figure this out. Just the way it works. Um, but both dogs now know right where that fence is, and the one, even the one who loves to play fetch, he will not go after that ball on the other side. If you kick the ball across his fence. Because he respects that fence. Here's the funny part. Funny part. So his collar has actually been dead for a month. He still won't cross his fence. <laughs> Until you take his collar off, he won't cross the fence. Because he respects that invisible line. The other dog, if her collar's dead, she's creeping down towards a hen house. Because chickens and cats look like fun things to chase. Okay, this is why these two dogs, they're both cattle dogs, are up in the yard. They're pinned away. The border collie isn't malicious to the birds. He just likes to herd them and work them. And they wind up dying in the process. So, I know my dogs. Um, <clears throat> there are underground buried. You could do underground buried wire if you want to do a full perimeter of your property. The problem with those, if you have ground squirrels or chickmunks, whatever you want to call them, they can break that wire and then your fence is dead and you get to go and try and figure out where this wire is that is buried in the ground is now broken and fix it. So that's why we didn't option for that one because that just seems like an awful lot of work. And we have lots of things to break that wire. Um, another option which we used for a while um, until the collar broke for our guard dog is actually a sporting collar where I could draw, GPS draw, his fence and then it would notify me when he left. Downside to that, the one that I had, once he left I had to A, have the remote in my hand and B, buzz him back in. C, I had to be within a half mile of him for it to stay connected. Which I'm sure is great when you're hunting and they're not going to get a half mile away. If he decides to take off to, for a coyote across the field, he could easily get a mile away in a very quick amount of time. Um, he has. And then I had to go find him. Um, so that's the downside to that one. There is one that I am looking at getting. It connects to your cell phone. I can't give any official review of that one because I have not actually tried it, but the people I've been talking to have really enjoyed it um, and really like it. So that's what I'm going to lean towards getting. The other downside to those collars is once they're off, you either have to have a second collar while it's charging or a dummy collar and hope your dog doesn't figure out that it's dead or not alive. Um, our dog got really smart and figured out when it was dead or not on or we just run around the remote. That's a problem with guard dogs. Um, they are very, very smart. So, what to do when your free roaming dog does leave? 
because it's going to happen, especially in the training period. Have a tie line, a tether something. Um, I've got a tether down by the hen house for the guard dog because that's where he's based out of. So if he leaves, like last night he went over to the neighbors, um, he got tied out all night. He has his dog house down there. He has everything he needs down there, but he got tied up for the night. Um, there is another chain up here by the house for the dogs for the lab because that's kind of his home base. Um, if he leaves, he gets tied up. Um, depending upon where he leaves and and how far, how long they get tied up. That's not a really good rule of thumb. Um, but yeah, it's one of those things that's going to happen as they kind of learn their rules or try to test their boundaries because dogs are like kids and they like to do that. So, yeah, pop your questions um, in the comments below if you have them. And if you want more details, make sure to join my free group. That is going to be linked in the description.